Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 6.4, the transformations of trigonometric functions. So you will recall that transformations are y equals a f of kx minus d plus c. If we just replace the f of x with sine x, then we get y equals a sine kx minus d plus c. And if you replace it with cos x, then you get y equals a cos kx minus d plus c. And you'll probably remember that a is the uh, vertical flip and or stretch slash compression. Um, K is the horizontal flip, stretch and compression. D is the uh, horizontal translation, left and right. And C is the vertical translation up and down. So when we're talking about trig, we actually have some special names for these. A is called the amplitude. K relates to the period, um, as in 360 over the absolute value of K is the period. Remember that period is always positive. Um, the phase shift is D, and C is the axis. Um, some other formulas for these are uh, the amplitude is also max minus min divided by 2 and the axis is max plus min divided by 2. So if we wanted to find the amplitude based on the equation we could or if we wanted to find the equation we would use this to help us out. So let's do an example. We're going to sketch this graph and we have to state the amplitude period phase shift and axis. So let's get started. We know the amplitude is going to be t 3 because it comes right from there. The period is 2 pi over k, which is 2, so that gives us pi. The phase shift is left pi over 6 because this is positive, so it's the opposite of what you want. And our axis, you have to write the equation y equals negative 1, and I'm going to write that right in right away. You can see that instead of drawing my x and y axis, I've actually drawn three lines, the axis, the maximum, and the minimum. We also know that sine has four parts, so we're going to draw four sections in. So that's the first section, second section, third section, fourth section, um, because we just want to make it nice and nice a uh, nice shape. So it starts at the middle, goes up to the top, to the middle again, down to the minimum, and then back up. We're going to connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner. And the more you practice this, the better you'll get at it. So just keep trying. You don't want to draw it like this with Vs because this is wrong. It looks more like an absolute value graph. So just be careful about that. So we get our sine graph, and we know that our maximum here is going to be 3 away from the axis. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and our minimum is 3 away from the axis as well. So negative 1 minus 3, that's negative 4. So that gives us those values right there. Um, and then we're going to use our phase shift. So we know that this is going to be negative pi over 6 because I want to move this over to the, to the left, right? So my axis will be here, and it got moved, then my whole graph got moved over. So I'm going to label that. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to draw my x-axis so that I know where to label it on the axis. So I know this is the x-axis be because this is negative 1 and this is 2. So it's somewhere in between those two. So we'll label that y. And so this becomes negative pi over 6. Um, and then I'm going to use... Uh, I'm going to use my knowledge of the period to figure out what these other points are. So that's pi over 6. I'll just label it on there. We know that um, the distance from the end to here is going to be pi. So if I add pi to negative pi over 6, that gives me this point, which is uh, 5 pi over 6. And then I know half of that, so up to here, is going to be pi over 2. I'm just dividing by 2, so that gives me um, pi over 3, and you can use your uh, you can use your big brain to figure it out with the fractions, your knowledge of fractions. And then this distance here, this distance is half of this distance, right? So pi over 2 divided by 2 gives us pi over 4, so it's a quarter of the period. And if you do the calculations, it ends up being pi over 12. 
and this one ends up being 7 pi over 12. So, just believe me, it's true. Okay, so now I can put my y-axis in. I know it's closer to pi over 12 than pi over 6. And you can also set x equals 0 to find the y-intercept if you want to be sure about where exactly it is. I know that it is about negative 1.6, or sorry, positive 1.6, so I know it's going to be about there. So I'm going to label my y-axis with a y, and then I'm also going to label the maximum and the minimum so that it's really clear what everything is. And you can see that's why I wanted to use a dotted line for my max and my min and my axis, because then when I draw on my x-axis and my y-axis, oops, which I mislabeled my x-axis, why didn't you tell me? Uh, then it's really clear which ones are, are real axes, right? Okay, so this is almost done. However, we do know that it says for 0 less than equal to x less than equal to 2 pi. So I'm going to have to keep on going because this is 5 pi over 6. If you add another pi to that, that's actually going to be 11 pi over 6. So I'm going to have to keep going even further than that. So let's draw another four sections in. And I know this is going to be 11 pi over 6 right here. And so we will just continue on. This is at this point, it goes to the maximum, this point back down to the middle, this point down to the minimum, and then to the middle again. So connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner. Just do your best to try to make it look sort of symmetrical. And then we want to go another little bit to 2 pi. So this will make 2 pi, and we'll just extend it a little bit. There we go. And then we have to just label these in, so 5 pi over 6 plus pi over 2 is oh, fi 4 pi over 3, sorry. So if you just do the calculations with the fractions, then you'll see that um, this point is actually going to end up being um, 13 pi over 12. And this point here is 19 pi over 12. And if you're not sure about fractions, then um, you know come and ask me and we can review them. But that is how we do it. Now we just have to do the domain and range. Don't forget to read your question again when you are answering a question, just in case. And we know that we didn't want this section. We just wanted 0 to 2 pi, so x and r, such that 0 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 pi. And the range is y and r, such that negative 4 is less than equal to y is less than equal to 2, which is our minimum and our maximum. So there we go. So here's a word problem to try, but it's going to be really similar. Um, a mass on a spring is pulled toward the floor and released, causing it to move up and down. Its height in centimeters above the floor after t seconds is given by the function h of t equals 10 sine 2 pi t plus 1.5 pi plus 15. So we want to sketch a graph of height versus time and predict when the mass will be 18 centimeters above the floor as it travels in an upward direction. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, we'll notice that this is not factored and we want it to be in factored form. So we'll do that first, which is probably a relief because there's a pi in there. We don't like pies. So we'll factor out the 2 pi. We get t plus 3. If you're not sure, you can try it and uh, test it. <laughs> divide 1.5 pi divided by 2 pi will give you 3. Plus 15. So that tells us that the axis is y equals 15. And um, so I can write that in axis y equals 15. The amplitude is going to be 10. And the period is. 2 pi over 2 pi, which is 1. That's a nice easy number to work with, better than using our fractions that we were using before. And our phase shift, oops, phase shift is left 3. So that's actually full periods, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Um, so let's get started with drawing. It's sine, so we're going to start with here. And like I said, we're going to just split into fours. We do know that the period is 1, and we want to know from 0 to 3, so that gives us 3 periods. So we're going to have to split it up so that it is uh, 4 times 3 sections. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It's first period, 2, 3, 4. Second period, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
third period. Okay, then I'm going to write in my maximum, which is 25, 15 plus 10, my minimum, which is 5, 15 minus 10, and I can just draw these in like this, so that goes up and down, gives me a little guideline to follow, and then we will just connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner, doing our best to keep it symmetrical, just do your best if you need a break, just pause and then keep going. Uh, there we go. And so because the phase shift is 3, we know that it's going to start again at the same spot. So we will just draw our y-axis Oops, right on top of the starting point right there and label it y. Uh, I haven't actually drawn my x-axis, which is somewhere here, so below the 5. You just have to use these numbers to help you out. So let's label along here 5, 15, 25. And then we can label these points at 0. So I know that, that this was 1, this was 2, and this was 3. And we should just label all the ones in between, so 0 0.25. 0.5, don't get lazy, okay, 0 0.75, 1.25, 1 1.5, 1 1.75, 2.25, 2.5, and 2.75, okay? So we just got to label every single one. You do want to do five significant, significant points per period. So we need to know when the mass will be 18 centimeters above the floor. We could estimate it on our graph, but we can do better than that because we can actually solve this equation. So we do know that we want it to be at 18, so I just drew an 18 in here. And uh, we know that we want it only when it's going upwards, and so if we chose this point to be going downwards, that's not what we want. So we're just going to choose these three points right here. We're going to look for them. By the way, the reason I keep talking about it being in four parts is because of the four quadrants. So this part of the graph is quadrant one, this part of the graph is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So let's go ahead and solve. 18 is equal to, uh, what's the original equation? I just got rid of it. <laughs> 10 sine 2 pi times t plus 3 plus 15. So we'll just go ahead and move those things over. I'm just going to skip a few steps here for the sake of brevity. t plus 3. So we're going to get, if we do inverse, we're going to get 2 pi times t plus 3 is equal to approximately 0 0.30 radians. So we just type this into our calculator, we'll get t plus 3 is approximately equal to 0.048-ish, and then we subtract 3, so t is equal to negative 2.95, but we know this happens every period, so we'll just add 3 to get to the original answer, which is about here. So we add 3, it gives us 0 0.05. If you add another period, that's one, that's one uh, second, then it'll be 1.05, and if you add another one, it'll be 2.05. So the spring is at height 18 centimeters at 0 0.05 seconds, 1.05 seconds, and 2.05 seconds. There you go. Okay, one last question. We're going to find the equation based on the graph. So this question asks us to find the temperature in Harleen's dorm room. Uh, if this is the graph over a 24-hour period, we want to find two possible equations for the graph, one using sine and one using cosine. Okay, so you have to be really careful here because it's really tempting to say, okay, this is the axis, which you have to double check. Okay, so let's see if we could figure it out. We know the max is approximately 25 and the min is going to be about 13 uh, according to our graph because half of this is 12.5 so it's a little bit above. So if we want to find the amplitude which is A, it's going to be the max minus the min divided by 2 
which gives us 25 minus 13 divided by 2, so 6. The axis, or C, is equal to max plus min divided by 2, 25, or 25 plus 13 divided by 2, which is 38, so 19. So don't just choose 17.5 because it's convenient and that's where it starts. You just got to be a little careful there. Okay, so we've got our A, we've got our C, um, and we know that it finishes one period in 24 hours. That's what the question has told us. So now we just have to worry about k, and k depends on whether you're using sine or cosine. So let's start with cosine first. It is easier to use cosine in this case because it's really easy to see where the minimum is or the maximum, um, but particularly the minimum, it's right here. So I can see it's at five. So that gives me a really easy phase shift. So I'm gonna use negative cos because it's upside down. Uh, it starts at the minimum and goes up to the maximum. So I'm gonna say that um, y is equal to negative, amplitude is six, cos, uh, and then my k is going to be two pi over 24. So two pi over the period, which is pi over 12. So write that in, pi over 12, times x minus five, because I'm going in the right direction, um, plus my axis, 19. Okay, so let's do the sine version. Um, so we could look for the middle, this is about 19, and then we could estimate it. Another way that we could do it is we know that this distance here is one quarter of the period. Uh, which is six hours. So we know this is about 11, which is what I would have estimated at anyways. So y equals positive six sine, positive because it's going upwards from the middle, right there, positive six sine pi over 12 times x minus 11 plus 19. So you'll just notice that the amplitude, the k, and the axis are all staying the same. It's just this negative or positive and the phase shift that depend on sine or cos. Okay, so that is how you do it. Bring any questions you have to class. We're going to practice a lot, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.